Oh. oh my God. It's been a huge journey, all the way from Adelaide to the heart of Australia, but our journey is far from over. Welcome to the NT. It's great to be here. Have a look at this. Western McDonald Ranges right in the center of Australia in as much detail as we possibly can. We're gonna try and hit the everything. It's outback adventure at its very best. Red desert camping, secluded hot springs, stunning gorges, and just so much more. It's a road trip of some magnitude. Oh, I don't need any more action today. But if the last week or so has taught us anything, it's that that plan could go completely out the window at any moment. Strap yourself in for a swashy ride. Balls to the wall. Holy heck. This track is not done with us just yet. Oh, oh my God. Off grid living, folks. It just keeps on delivering. We are currently in the middle of a bucket list Central Australian adventure. However, flooding and unseasonal rain have meant that our plans have been completely thrown out the window. Last episode, you saw us push like hell just to get to Mount Dare. Problem is, we're only halfway along this track. We aren't sure what lies ahead between Mount Dare and our next goal, the desert town of Alice Springs. But there's only one way to find out, and that's to push on. Mount Dare lies on the edge of a huge floodplain, and after a recent massive rain dump, the roads in and out are about as challenging as they come. The roads were reopened just a few days ago to tourists, but getting through is still no walk in the park, and the rigs are already showing signs of hard use. Our eventual goal on this journey, of course, is to make it all the way out to Darwin. But for our next leg, we're taking the adventurous route north to Alice Springs, hugging the edge of the Simpson Desert up through the little town of Fink, before heading out west to a hidden gem in the NT, the West McDonald Ranges. Before we say goodbye to Mount Dare and cross into the NT, there's just one more bucket list item to tick off first. And for that, we're unhooking the vans for the day. Well, it's crazy what a difference just a couple of days makes. You're probably thinking right now as you look at this footage, what do you mean those tracks look atrocious? But four days ago, five days ago, this right through here was a sea of water. A pretty unseasonal little dumping of rain caught us off guard. We had to wait, we had road closures, track closures, delays. Tracks are still a little how you're going. So we've dropped the vans off, left them back at Mount Dare, and we are punching south down, of course, to the Dalhousie Thermal Springs. So fingers crossed we can get through. Where there's a will, there's a way, and where there's a hot spring, I'll get us to it. A little bit sloppy through here. I haven't got a clue what it's gonna be like, so I'm going in. Yes, balls to the wall. That looks fun. Holy heck. Yeah, it's, um, it's kind of a mix of slippery and solid. That I know that doesn't make any sense, but it, it's kind of hard and soft. That is absolutely no help to us whatsoever. <laughs> so I'm just going balls to the wall too. Oh. Oh yeah, watch. Windows up was definitely a good call. Yeah. Oh. I've done it easy. But it's like, ah! No, oh. I've done it again. You can't see out of that. <laughs> There's a car there. Leaving the vans at base camp was definitely a good call today. With conditions staying pretty wet on the long run, to Dalhousie Springs. Wow. <laughs> right now, we're on the western edge of the vast Simpson Desert, one of the driest places on earth, and that just makes today's destination all the more special. It's an incredible artesian hot spring in the middle of the desert. And when they call it hot, <laughs> it is no joke. How hot do we think we're talking here? Imagine me. Oh. Freshly shaven, oh, in a suit. Oh, Why did I ask? Like, so hot. <laughs> we Here we go. It's not, it's not oh, that. oh, Jesus. That is a hot. <laughs> that is a spicy meatball. Yep, this bad boy sits at an incredible 37 degrees. <gasps> that is lovely. I feel like I'm doing something wrong. And on a hot 40 degree day, it's especially toasty. Hot as it is, though, swimming in water like this is truly unique. Although the locals recommend that blokes wear some jocks under their bodies. <laughs> and we soon realise why. Oh, those little fish, I don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> Old masculine Cahill, scared of a little goby. This is really beautiful. It is lovely, isn't it? I was going to say it's a cool way to start a trip, but it's actually not. It's a hot it's way to start a, a trip. It's a very warm way to start it's a trip. It's a spicy way to start a trip, but... 
doesn't pretty look pretty bloody glorious. It is, it is glorious. This place is hot, really hot. So we thought, let's head north where things get even hotter. Tell you though, if you come past Dalhousie Springs, you've got to drop in and have a bit of a old dippy. This is somewhere between a swim and a bath, I reckon. With a swim under our belts, it's time to head back to pick up the Mavericks and see if we can even make it out of the waterlogged road north. And the worst conditions are literally just a few metres from the front gate. Maybe give me a bit of room and we'll see how we go. Strap yourself in for a sloshy ride. Yeah, look, reports coming in last night were saying that this could be a bit messy, so we might be in for a bit of fun here. I'm excited. First gear, high, try and crawl my way through it. Let's see how we go. Oh. oh. I'm not giving it too much curry. Don't want to cut it up any more than it already is, but I am maintaining about 18 k's an hour. And as you can see, there's no need to drive through it too much gumption. Even though to look at it would suggest you've really got to get into it. You can't even really pick a line through here, you've just got to go with the ruts. Oh, I can hear him giving it a bit up there too. Mm. Yeah, it's actually pretty good guys. You won't need to uh, you won't need to give it too much mumbo, but just be ready in case you do bog down a little bit. Yeah, we could hear a little bit of mumbo from back here, my friend, so that looked like a bit of fun. Oh boy. Yep, windows down was a great idea. <laughs> I immediately regret that decision. <laughs> I'm already coated. <laughs> Big chunk on my face. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, that's pretty solid. With the smaller tyres on the D-Max, my main concern I had for the guys would be vehicle clearance through those big ruts. But both the car and the Eminence van behind them are tracking through nicely. If it wasn't for it being red, it'd almost be a car wash through there. Nicely done, Orch. Yeah. All right, well, next stop, the infamous Fink. Now, in true off-grid style, the route that we're going to be taking north is one of the more adventurous options. Passing through Fink and following the legendary race course along the remains of the old Garn Railway. First though, we've got a border crossing to get to, and it's time to say goodbye to Stefan Harley's home state. If I'm not mistaken, we're heading north, far north, we're into the Northern Territory. It's not much of a celebration. Border restrictions currently apply for entry to the NT and everything's been blocked out. So I'm guessing we are good to go. Ready, ready, watch things change. Ready? Welcome to the NT. Mate, it's great to be here. I'm feeling a little bit smarter. A little bit smarter, you reckon? What's brought that on? Uh, moving out of those lower states, you know, <laughs> <SA>. <laughs> I see how it is. Oh, here we go, yeah, look. Mate, we could actually feel the weather change a little bit this morning. You can feel the humidity already. I don't think there's any rain forecast, but heck, no on our bloody luck. Yeah, look, if there's any chance of rain, we will be in it. But look, we'll keep pushing on and hopefully it holds out for us. <laughs> Conditions aren't exactly getting easier as we push on, with crossings and flooded sections popping up around every bend. Ooh, got us another little section here. Been a lot of these. What it's kind of doing is, well, it's making the rig's extremely dirty, but it's kind of stuffing up your rhythm. You can't kind of get into any flow because you're constantly sort of slowing down, reassessing where you should be going. Uh, and you never really know if you're taking the right line or not. Like this one here, I think I'm going the right way, but to be honest, I'm just kind of guessing. The good news is it's starting to dry out, and even though it's sloppy, you're reaching that hard base underneath quite easily. Then you sort of pop out of it like this, and you, you're back on the hardest of hard, hard ground you've ever seen. We've been battling those conditions now for about four or five days. And there's big distances we've got to do in between too. So just between you and me, I'll be okay to say, but I don't see any more, oh, I was gonna say, but I don't see any more mud in a while, I'll be happy, another big patch up here. <laughs> a week ago, when we left Maree in South Australia, we had literally no idea just how much of a challenge we'd bitten off taking this back route to Alice. But as we get close to the community of Fink, at last it seems like the worst of the conditions are behind us. With the first section of properly dry roads we've seen in days rolling out ahead of us. Now look, the township of Fink might be a tiny outback community nestled on the edge of the desert, 
but it's a name that's famous for one big reason, and that's the Fink River Desert Race. It's an annual event running along a dedicated racetrack that stretches a couple of hundred k's from Alice Springs to Fink. And with the race just a few weeks away, we can see riders out scoping the track. The road itself is actually built over the old railway line. And as we cross an old embankment, things take a sudden turn. Oh, that's a big old washout. You would not want to fall in there. Yeah, that's a big bloody hole, isn't it? That would be the end here. When you've got a car the size of mine, it could be remarkably difficult to avoid it. So we're gonna go, we're gonna go with a speed issue. Oh! oh. In a momentary lapse of concentration, I've given the Viper 13 a knock that almost sent it over. Jeepers, I suggest you severely watch that. And what looked to be a solid edge turns out to be a cave-in waiting to happen. The guys have tried to follow my line, but it turns out to be a major mistake. And suddenly, they've run out of road. Oh my God. The D-Max is stuck between a rock and a hard place. Heading forward would seriously endanger the van, but backing up is also gonna be difficult. Sometimes taking the road less traveled is not always the best option. Now, coming out of Fink, there is a left and a right. Fortunately, my fearless leader said, let's go right. What to do, Stephanie? I don't know, but this feels very unsafe. <laughs> of course, can't go forward. That would end in some form of disaster. So we're gonna try and go backwards, which is still fraught with danger. As you can see, it's a drop off on this side, so we haven't got much room to play with. Gonna come forward ever so slightly, and then just try and maneuver that front around. Is it gonna work? I honestly don't know. Right, we're gonna do this really quietly. Come forward, like, 20 centimetres. Straighten up. Straighten up, you're gonna want that room on that side. Yeah, stop there, and let's just see if we can skirt you around it. Yeah, I'm just gonna put it idle back. No, no, you turn the, you turn the wheel. You turn the wheel, you're gonna fall in the hole. That way? Yep, hold that line, don't move that line. Don't straighten up. That trailer's gonna jack off. No, that's your only option. Keep going. Keep going. You can straighten up. Yep, yep, on that. Ah, too far, too far. Yep. Right, I do what you got to do with the van. No, 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 not that much. <laughs> yep, bit back, bit back. Yep, yeah, yep. Got another 30 centimetres. Okay, do what you need to do with the van. That was a game of centimetres, I think. Just nice and gentle, you've got about a metre and a half to play with. Keep coming, keep coming. Right, stop there, stop there, stop there. <laughs> that was the smallest metre and a half I've ever driven. <laughs> it is, because I saw the bank start to collapse. I now feel sorry for your misses with that type of uh, <laughs> measurement exaggeration. No, 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 it was there. We just didn't, we couldn't play with it all, you know what I mean? <laughs> with a close eye on those clear views, Harley manages to back his way out of trouble and line up another way around. Now, as with all things to do with film, be it stills or motion, it'll not look like it did on the day. That is a heck of a hole. If we'd fallen down that, especially the van, if the van had gone over the side of that, see ya, would have been a feature of the Fink Desert Race. Would have been called New Van Corner or Maverick Corner. Luckily, we managed to shimmy him around and out. Now, I'm not 100% sure where that goes. So I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll go this way. They can go that way, and we'll meet somewhere before Alice Springs, hopefully, fingers crossed. There you go. See ya. After turning the map up the right way, we've soon linked back up, and a check of the tow ball at the back of the Y62 reveals that the impact has bent my four-ton tow hitch like a pretzel. Now, look, I'm going to be able to limp into Alice, but as we take off again, something else seems to be wrong underneath the vehicle. You hear that? Cable tie. I'm a drive shaft trick. Got him. <laughs> I don't need any more action today. What's going on under there? Oh, I picked up a stick. Yeah, that old chest. I can't do it anymore. I can't handle any more stress. Uh, I'll tell you what, the hits never stop out here. You gotta be on your toes. I'm wired, I'm sprung, I'm ready, I'm like a cheater. Woohoo! Let's go!
<laughs> like I said, this track used to be the base of the railway line that serviced Central Australia. And there's remnants of that bygone era to be found all along the road. There we go, these little numbers here. If you needed a reminder that you are in fact driving along the old Garn railway line, these railway spikes, you see them everywhere. Oh, I've seen about five or six just in the last couple of hundred. Oh, there's one down there, I can see another one sticking out of the sand down there. Uh, so of course these were used to hold the sleepers to the, um, to the footings. My hope is that I don't find any like that on coming because they'll go straight, well, I hope they won't, but I'm thinking they'd go straight through your tyre. Now, for the day I've had so far, <laughs> last thing I need right now is to get one of these through my tyre, but a lot of people collect these. What you can do is you can get a bit of wood. This is a real granddad spec thing to do. You get a bit of wood, polish it up, drill a hole, pop those in a bit of wood, make yourself a hat stand. I only own one hat. After an eventful day with more than a few surprises, what we really need now is to find a nice desert camp and unwind. And right on beer o'clock, we stumble on the perfect spot. The camping in this part of the world is where the magic of desert travel really shines through. With big open vistas, clear cool nights, plenty of dry wood, and of course that iconic rust red sand. Just came out here to get a another bin liner for the van. I keep your bin liners in your little toolbox down here. And I noticed my latches, so much mud, they're com oh, completely gummed up. Luckily, I carry a secret weapon with me now. For the hardened caravanners out there, you'll know exactly what it is I've got in my, in my hand. For the rest of you, let's just go with the fact that I'm carrying a pressure pack for whatever reason I am. Without giving the game away too much, that is remarkably similar to its intended use. I'm on cooking duties tonight, and I've got some steaks in the fridge that are about ready to get up and walk. So we're gonna go for a barbecue tonight. With camp set up for the night, it's time to take a closer look at the damage today's detour might have done. Well, I've had a good look around the rest of the vehicle. And so far, all I can see that we've done is bend this tow hitch, which in itself is remarkable. The forces to do that, incredible. And I mean, it, was, it just goes to show, I wasn't even going fast. I mean, I couldn't have been going more than, I estimate, between five and seven kilometres an hour, not even that, five kilometres an hour. You know, that's going to be a quick repair. We'll throw in the bin and buy a new one when we get to Alice. I've looked everywhere. Hitch is okay, van's okay, chassis straight, wheels are all okay, this vehicle's okay. I think it just bore the brunt of it on that pin. Just snapped it down and... That's the outcome, but we're still good, we're still time, we're still all right to go. But yeah, geez, fingers crossed that's all I've done, but I've looked everywhere, I can't see anything else. Testament to the strength of both the vehicle and the van. It's been a big day. But soon we're kicking back by the fire and washing down the dust of the road with a cheeky red. And life, well, you guessed it, it feels pretty damn good. this, I've got such a setup here, I'm loving life. Keeping it real simple tonight, you're probably wondering, Grazza, why the hell are you cooking on a Weber when you've got a barbecue fire going over there? Well, the reason being that if I get that fire to a point where I can cook on it, we don't have a campfire. And Harley's a bit of a fire bug, he likes to put wood on there, so I'm just gonna let him go nuts, build that sucker up. We're in the desert, it's gonna get quite cool tonight. So I thought we'd get the Weber out. Now, speaking of life's little luxuries, Stefan Harley's Eminence van comes with an internal oven grill which we're using tonight to keep the meat warm as we go. Folks, I don't know where you are right now. It might be a Wednesday, it might be a Thursday. I'm not too sure when you're watching this, but I hope sincerely that you are dreaming and planning of this. Sitting around campfire, having a couple of beers with good friends in the middle of nowhere. It really is what it's all about.
G'day folks, hope you're enjoying the show so far. Now look, you would have noticed that I've been hooking into one or two of these bad boys right here. What are they? It is wine in a can from Off Track Wines. Sensational, I might add. Got a bit of a deal for you. Right now, running for about a week, you can have 20 bucks off any mixed pack. Now you get 12 cans in a mixed pack, that equates to four bottles of wine. And you'll get a free tumbler too. So you really are getting your bang for your buck and you have to be a bit careful about these things too because they taste so good. It's very easy to open another can. 12 cans in total, 98 bucks 50, free shipping on any mix pack anywhere in Australia. Jump online right now, folks, save some money. The destinations we've been hitting over the past few weeks are icons of Australian outback travel, but we've barely seen a soul over the past few days, and it feels like we've got the entire desert to ourselves. me in the act just checking out a bit of the old cameraman's footage see if it's up to scratch you know when we started this trip a couple of weeks back now we didn't have the camera car so we had to make do by putting the camera in with me and i thought yeah we are going to struggle for room but we've sort of rearranged things a bit and the mitts canopy this is where it really has started to shine so our cameraman has used basically this space here which goes all the way back there every single night because he's got lights he's got everything he needs here he's got power to do all the backing up and logging of footage and it's worked exceptionally well i still managed to get chainsaw fuel jack shovels hammer bucket all my bits and pieces in this drawer a recovery kit up here of course air compressor up here battery everything's still in here i just rearranged how it sort of went in to fit the cameraman even got harley at the back here today borrowing some tools it's just such a versatile canopy when i get home i've got a few ideas i might even change how i've got the back of this because of course everything needs modular i was going to try and show you but it's kind of hard to show you because the lack thereof dust it's got nothing in here so much so the cameraman's actually trusting this area to keep some of his gear in that is pretty delicate and you wouldn't want dust to get on it. So that's a testament to it. But after everything we've been doing, all the mud, everything else, I mean, look at the mud down through here and nothing's got in the canopy. And that for me out here is so super important because I don't want to have to deal with dust and mud inside the canopy. Today, we've got another big day planned with the aim to make it north to Alice Springs and then to an amazing mountain range that I guarantee you'll be adding to your list when you see it. Desert wood is second to none when it comes to campfires and it pays to collect it while you can in allowed areas. And with room to spare, we're taking the chance to stock up. Stunning morning in the desert. We heard two cars go past last night, so that's literally seen two vehicles in... 36 hours like I said shoulder season really is about risk and reward we've had a bit of both on this trip the risk of course has been the conditions we've had to adhere to and bend to wait for allow for get through no big deal really the reward everything's green plenty of water around and virtually zero I'm gonna say zero zero tourists stunning time of the year to be out here After getting a sniff of reception, I've rung ahead to Alice and I can't seem to find a hitch for love nor money. So I'm going to have to order one in. So while we wait, we're punting directly to our next destination. And this one, this is a cracker. West and south of Alice Springs lies a huge mountain range known as the McDonald Ranges. It's jam packed full of deep gorges, hikes and four wheel drive tracks. But given its remoteness, it gets far less attention and tourists than similar destinations like Karajini, for example. Everyone sort of comes barreling up from Adelaide through to Darwin, stops in at Alice to grab some fuel, bit of Maccas, and then head north again. But if you take a left-hand turn, or a right, depending on which direction you're going, and head west out of Alice Springs, the McDonald Ranges are utterly spectacular. Now, as I keep saying throughout this entire trip, we're right on the shoulder season here. It's about a month-ish is what we're hearing from the locals, about a month before the place starts to really fill up. 
perfect timing to see the Western Max. And we've got a bit of weather on our side too. What I mean by that is we've got a couple of cooler days coming up, still sunny, still beautiful. Some crisp nights to have a big campfire. Western Max shoulder season, perfect weather. Doesn't get much better. Oh, absolutely. Well, actually, it's about to get a little bit better because we've uh, we've got a few mates around this uh, area and they've given us some local tips on some places we should check out. And holy dooly, it looks like we're in for a spectacular <laughs> treat. Due to the fact that I don't particularly want to be pushing it too hard, what would you say to making a spectacular base camp for the next few days? Oh, Love that. Yeah. Love that. I'm thinking circle the wagons, river bank, big fires, cook-ups, and then zipping out from the base camp each day to uh, explore the hidden wonders that you two have found. Yeah, let's set up camp, man, and go explore. You can't go far along the ranges without tripping over a stunning gorge or campsite. And we've got a local's favorite camp lined up for this evening. But before heading into camp, we're gonna stop and check out a few spectacular sites nearby, starting with Serpentine Gorge. Rock pools like that played a huge part in sustaining Aboriginal communities over thousands of years they lived off the land, and to this day are considered areas of huge cultural and spiritual significance. To get a real sense of the magnitude of these gorges though, you have to get above them. Excuse my breathing. Ah, we're just climbing up the side of the old. Where's the McDonald's? Up the Lara Pinta Trail. What I wanted to bring to your attention, folks, is look how green it is out there. Look at that. It's been wet out here. They've had some early season, much welcome rain. As you can see, place is blooming. Look at that. Place is blooming fantastic. Glad I'm not an unfit middle-aged man. That'd suck. From up on the ridgeline, the views into the gorge are absolutely breathtaking. And not just because of the climb. Woo, it's a bit of a hike to get up here, but like a lot of things in life, put a bit of effort in, it's worthwhile. That view speaks for itself. But check this out. Right down there, a couple of K away, is another gorge. And it looks like it's about that wide. What I wouldn't give to put a pack on, just wind my way down there and check that out. Yeah, once again, I know I'm harping on about a lot this trip. Shoulder season out here at the moment. The days are starting to get cooler, but they have been quite warm. And I guess that keeps the crowds down a bit this time of year. It's a weekend. We've got the place to ourselves yet again. Stunning. Freaking stunning. They're going the wrong way. We need to go that way. Come on, See how they treat me out here? If you're watching this at home and you're wondering what it's like out here, this is how they treat me. If you ever meet any of the crew on the road, kick them in the knee from me. According to the locals, the McDonald's offer a number of places to drop in for a swim. Stefan Hales have got a spot in mind just up the road. Now, our last swim location was a toasty 37 degrees, but with the temps already dropping here in the afternoon, I'm not sure this one will be nearly as balmy. Right on, that's settled up. <laughs> yep, looks good. Well, on the way over here, our fearless leader, Graham Cahill, the inspirational, the one, the only. The man, the myth, the legend. He said he had the intestinal fortitude. Turns out he does not have that, nor the plums to get in the cold water, but <laughs> we're gonna go for a swim. Look, it's been a hot day, it's been a long day. We've just hiked up to the top of the lookout, it's so. It's refreshing. Yeah. Some things in life don't need to be entered to be appreciated. <laughs> don't be a weak dog. Oh, you are f No! There is no way I'm going in here. That is... <sighs> in you get. Tighten these up. I think there's really only one way to do this. What's that? Right in. Oh. That's actually all right. Oh. Oh. Actually, the further you get out, <laughs> <laughs> the tighter that gets, but that's all right. Tune in next time, folks, when we go to the Northern Territory and swim in 28 degree water. <laughs> Till then, goodbye. <laughs> oh. 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 
For those of you at home that don't know, the old GoPro stick can be turned into a little bit of a water suction that then can also be used as a squirt. <laughs> Pretty happy with myself on that one. This one might be a bit much for an old dog like me, but it's a gorgeous spot, and like most of the gorges here, there is the option to camp as well close to the swimming hole, with toilets and basic amenities. For us though, it's time to get back to our own self-contained camp by the river, where camp is soon springing up. Now, I mentioned the plan to base camp the vans over the next few days as we explore. And for that, we're heading back to the Fink River on the edge of the ranges at an incredible riverside camp with a perfect backdrop. Right, oh, what a spot. There's the view on this one. Just gonna reverse the van straight back here, get it nice and level and nice and lined up. Bit of a tip for you, if you've never reversed anything before, be it a caravan, a camper trailer, trailer, boat, whatever it might be, it can be a little bit daunting when you first try it because everything kind of feels backwards. You know, you, you, you go this way and the van, you know, the van does this and it does that. Here's a quick tip for you that'll make life a lot easier when you're trying to reverse in a directly straight line with your van on the back. If you're reversing backwards like I'm doing right now and you look in your right hand mirror and you see the van in your right hand mirror, right hand down, go right hand down and back and that'll bring the van back into line. The same, if you look in your left hand mirror and you see the van come over into the left hand side, same again, left hand down. Now you want to try and do that in small increments. I'm obviously overcompensating here just to show you what I mean. And that's the way to keep your van nice and straight. Like I say though, makes it so much easier when you've got good towing mirrors like the clear views here. Because they just give you so much area to work with, you can see so much more. And the more you can see, the easier it is. That is plum. Look at the view. It's pretty clear why this spot is a local recommendation, with the late afternoon sun lighting up the rocks all around us. Once again, the place is almost entirely our own. As far as base camps go, they don't get much better than this. It's only one thing, and I think you can guess what it is that'll make it better. Oh, for crying in a bucket. It's not a bloody nail in your fridge, that's for sure. It's a cold beverage. <laughs> an epic location needs a suitable feed, and Steph and Harley have got an ambitious one planned for tonight, and have asked me to get some coals ready for the campfire. Righto mate, so camp set up, mm -hmm. uh, fire is going. Cranking. Yeah, just about to start cooking tea. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we're pretty well right, but. One thing left, we need some wines for the campfire. Yeah, a crack of wine for dinner. And check this out, we have storage deluxe in this van. So much so that we've been running the storage under our bed as our cheeky little wine cellar. Does oh. life get much better than this, having a wine cellar under your bed? like to just clarify, we are also carrying the wine for the whole trip, yeah. not just us. Well, have a go at this for a campsite. Western McDonald Ranges over there. Right now, I'm sitting about smack bang in the middle of Australia, and it kind of got me to thinking, as you do when you're in locations like this, reminiscing a little, if you will, about how it all started. Going back a few years now, had a dream to build up that big rig over there, the old Y62. Never really anticipated chopping it in half, but the, the availability came. I took it and went with it. Don't regret a single second of doing so. And of course, it was all aimed towards this moment right here. This moment right here. Now let's just go back a bit. Last year, the dream sort of started to take shape. We took the vans all the way up into the Kimberley, back down to my hometown of Pemberton, then across the Nullarbor. I mean, that trip for me was absolutely amazing. The Air Peninsula, then up the Oodnadatta track into Mount Dare in the floods. And now, here, have a look at this. Western McDonald Ranges right in the centre of Australia. It's only halfway through our trip. We've got so much more to go this year. But what am I getting at? I think I put this thing into reality 
couple of years ago in the sense that I had a dream and I wanted to make it work. And that was a few years ago and we've been chipping away at it slowly but surely to get to where I am right now. And that is to stand beside this flyer with that vehicle, the vans, some good friends and a heap of plans ahead of us, folks. It doesn't matter what it is you're dreaming of, just have a crack at it. Make the small changes that'll get you there. Small, incremental changes that lead to massive changes that lead to you sitting around a campfire or whatever it is that makes you grin like a chimp. Because that's what I'm doing right now. I freaking love this in case you can't tell. So we are definitely at that point of the trip where we're two weeks in, we're running out of food and we've gone through the pantry, we've gone through the fridge and this is what we've got left. So typically you could just throw it all in a pot, go for a stew, but we're going with a pie tonight. Now, I've never done one of these in a, in a camp oven, but we thought we'd give it a go because a bit of variety, it's the spice of life and we like to mix things up. All right, mate, I think we're pretty well ready. Awesome. So everything's chopped, we're right. We've got all our basic ingredients here, stock, tomato paste, a little bit of wine and Secret ingredient? No, because oh. we're not idiots. We've got salt in the stock. It's not now. It's not happening. Let's just keep this basic. Someone's going to be very disappointed tonight, mate. Ah, too bad. We don't care. So <laughs> look, let's start frying these. We'll go with the mushrooms, the onion, and the garlic. Fry everything off. Get it in there. Let it boil down for a bit. And then on to the pastry. All right. So we tried this last time and. Uh, it didn't quite go to plan, so... Up the ante. We might up the ante. Up the ante on Uncle Claude's special uh, chilli sauce. This might kill someone. Get it all in there. This is smelling glorious. Looks good, mate. Looks good. Right, we'll chuck the lid on. Let yep. that cook for another hour-ish. Yep, perfect. And then come back, pop it in the camp oven with pastry. Turn it into a pie. Love it. Now look, we've we've done this a grand total of uh, zero times, so it's just a bit of plug and play at the minute and make this up as we go, but it's pastry. Yeah, I can be. Oh yeah, that smells so good. Oh, look at that. The pie's nearly done, the lid is on, but we just have one special little touch to go. A whole pie in a camp oven is not something I've seen pulled off before, but there's only one way to find out. Righto, so this thing's been on for about 20 minutes, half an hour, and you know it is cooked because your missus starts getting pretty hangry. <laughs> I just want the pie. <laughs> Not only your missus. <laughs> you gaddy old It's bloody. getting late, let's <laughs> rip her open. Such and such. All right, let's get it off and get a look at it. Holy balls. Oh, now, Mr. Cameraman, get a look at that. That's actually sick. Look at that. Oh, oh my hear that Lord. sizzle. Holy balls, who put the chilli in here? <laughs> <laughs> Look, right. I'm glad, glad to see it actually caught up with you this time because I uh, Man. come up short last, but... Well, it's got a, it's got a, a base. Like and, a proper and pie sides, base. And a top. Yeah. And a top, and it's like a juicy inside. It's like a freaking pie that you'd, you'd travel Australia for this pie. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you like it. It was worth mm. the wait. It is a little late on the campsite tonight. But... That's right. It's delicious, it was worth it. Well, given what we've seen today, yep. we are gonna need some fortification, mm. me especially. And if this sucker don't stuck to your ribs, ain't nothing will. Mm. <laughs> and Hales, chilly, man. Yep, get it into you, mate. Bring it back down. It'll keep no, you warm tonight. Not but at my all. my toilet canister has only got so much space. <laughs> not at all. But this, honestly, man, it's freaking amazing. Can you put the recipe up on social media so everyone out there can do the same thing because that's actually hard to do without burning the bottom and the whole yep. lot. Look, folks, keep an eye out. This pie is worth making because it is freaking superb. When you're travelling big distances, it's easy to forget to slow down occasionally and just decompress. And after all the struggles getting through waterlogged roads over the past week, the McDonald Ranges make for the perfect place to slow down for a bit and do some local exploring. 
And that's exactly the plan for today. We have just woken up in absolute paradise. Gaz has fired up the barbecue. He's got bacon and eggs going for the whole crew. What a guy. And we've got these views to just soak in. We have been treated to some spectacular campsites while we've been on the road, but this one here has got to take the cake. Look at it. And yeah, I know what you're all saying at home. He always says that. This is the best camp ever. And I do say it a lot because I get to see a heck of a lot of great camps. Out of 10, guys. 12. 12. Thank you, sir. One time special egg. Yum, yum, yum. Some slurping going on, that's good news. And in case you're all wondering, this is what we leave for the cameraman. He gets one piece of straggly bacon and that egg. That's his. There you go, mate. Get into it. I'm just about to put some diesel in. I just want to show you something that's uh, it's pretty cool. We've got this new roller rack up here. As you can see, it's tough as nails. I'm just standing up here. It's given us so much extra space to carry the extra diesel jerry, which we've needed out here. We've had the cameraman swag. All these slats here are fully adjustable, so you can shift them to fit whatever you're carrying up here on this rack. It's actually got runners under the bottom here, so all our hooks just clip straight on the bottom there. Tie it down, no worries at all. Fuel is a big consideration when tying around here and it pays to do your research on what fuel stops are available and bring a few jerrys just in case, especially if you're running a thirsty V8. Today the plan is to suck the guts out of what's on offer around the ranges. We're taking a drive down to the Lawrence Gorge, south of the main ranges, and first up, you guessed it, we're heading into another cool gorge, and this time, we should be able to walk right into it. Well, if you think this looks familiar, you'd be right. Very, very similar to Karajini, where we were last year. However, this place doesn't seem to get anywhere near the credit that Karajini does, and as such, doesn't seem to get the same amount of crowds. Now, I am in the middle of shoulder season at the moment. Maybe it's a bit different around June, July, but right now, have a go at that. And I can see the entire walk from here. Nobody, not a soul. Gorges like this shaped by millennia of water and wind flow, and to be able to step into them like this is like heading back into a land that time forgot. Gorges always blow my mind. Yeah. Like, yeah. how was this 800 million years ago all underwater? My brain like, is not capable. How? No. And all of the red cliffs were sand. What I always think about is that if this was underwater, would have been a sick fishing island. <laughs> As you drop on a lure from up there, oh, down yeah. past these cliffs, at the ooglies that would live down here. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's what I think about when I see this. You have no luck catching anything in the water when it's this shallow. No, that's why I need it to be full. Like it's <laughs> more water, more fish. Exactly, that's my thoughts. Mm -hmm. no, but it's time and time and pressure. <laughs> Just got a very wet behind. Like much of Central Australia, the roads around here were built around the needs of cattle farmers. But prior to that, it was the riverbeds themselves that served as outback highways for drovers and travellers to navigate the harsh terrain. Well, ain't this bloody spectacular? It's called Lawrence Gorge. Right now, I'm driving on one of the tributaries of the Hugh River. If you ask me, Hugh River sounds like an American actor, but you can see why they called these rivers out here highways. You could drive the cattle up the middle of them. For the most part, you'd be able to find food and water 
i.e. animals and birds that had come down to those water holes, and it offered fairly easy passage through this country because as you can see here, she's wide, she's open, you'd be able to walk your cattle up and down through here, and your horse is pretty darn easily. Have a look at this, check this out, I'm actually going to be able to drive up to it, hang on, I'll just grab it. Well, there's a piece right there, hang on a second, let me just, I'll show you what I'm talking about, look at that. <laughs> that there is debris from floods down the Lawrence River here. Now the river itself is right over there, way over there. So if it was flooding right now, and there's more up there, right up there, if it was flooding right now, I'd be underwater and we're 50 metres. Oh, shivers, we're 150 metres from, from the main water course. That's way over there. This is just a tributary here. That's freaking incredible in the middle of the desert. Blows my mind, always has. And now I've got weird anti things all over the car. <laughs> We've got some huge plans and big caves to knock over the coming days, and a day exploring has been the perfect way to recharge the batteries. After hitting a few more iconic spots like Stanley's Chasm and Stewart's Pass, it's time to head back to the vans and soak up another perfect NT evening. Yeah, folks, we need to take a poll. I need to know what you guys are thinking. You've been watching Off Grid now for over 10 episodes, and I want to know, in order to help out you guys, in order to give you guys the best show possible, what is it about Off Grid that you're liking? What is it you're excited about? Is it the new locations? Is it my awesome cooking skills? <laughs> is it just being shown new places around Australia so that you can add them to your bucket list? As for me, let's not get into it, because I'm living and breathing it. I'm loving every single bloody moment of it. In the comments down below, let me know, please. I really want to hear what you think. It's been a huge journey, all the way from Adelaide to the heart of Australia. But our journey is far from over. With the whole of the NT stretching ahead of us and a plan to make it through to Arnhem Land and then on into Darwin. Off grid living, folks. It just keeps on delivering. Well, final night in Central Australia and she is putting on a show. Sun's gone down, cliffs have all turned red, driving was spectacular. It's going to be chilly tonight, seven degrees. As I've said before, this is not it for us. We are continuing folks. I sincerely hope you're either doing it or dreaming about it, whatever it might be that makes you froth. Because I want to know that you are getting ready to stand right here where I am on your own personal dream trip. We'll catch you next time on Off Grid. Coming up on Off Grid, one of the most misunderstood remote locations in Australia, Arnhem Land. I haven't been back in over a decade. The fishing is off tap, the camping some of the best in Australia, and the crowds pretty much non-existent. This place has got my heart, it's blown me away, and all in one, I am back in love with Arnhem Land. This is one not to be missed. Coming up on Off Grid.